Hi and welcome. I'm Lisa. Thanks for joining me here on the Whimsy Stamps YouTube channel. Today I'm back as promised with more information on the Magic Mushrooms with Distress Oxide ink pads. I'm going to have a side by side comparison using the mushrooms and Whimsy's very own blender brushes. Please stick around. I have a two for one card process I'm going to share with you a little later in the video featuring some newly released products. These products just dropped today in the Whimsy Stamps online shop the Weirdo Frame Die, Wow Word and Shadow Die Set, and the Monster Cuties Stamp Set. You're going to want to see these. Now, if you're new to the Whimsy Stamps channel, how about hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell to stay in touch when new content is posted? To our loyal subscribers, welcome back. Let's get into this. So as promised, here we are, a brand new box of magic mushrooms ordered from Whimsy Stamps online shop. We're going to be talking about the magic mushrooms with Distress Oxide inks. First, let's go ahead and unbox these so you can see exactly what you get when you order them from Whimsy Stamps. So I'm going to pop this box open and go ahead and pull the 10 magic mushrooms out. So here we go. Out of the box, you have 10 magic mushrooms and 10 plastic cases. If you haven't checked out my video here on the Whimsy Stamps channel, my first impression video of the magic ma mushrooms, I highly recommend that you check it out first and then follow up with this video. So here we have the mushrooms out of the packaging. You, you get 10 mushrooms and 10 containers when you order these from Whimsy. Now I have used the pink one because I wanted to get a feel for how this was going to work with the Distress Oxide ink pad. Um, so I went ahead, I moistened my sponge like you're supposed to. I used it with my picked raspberry ink pad. And I was like, you know what, if I do this and it messes up my ink pad, it's only one ink pad, I'll replace it. But I know not to go any further, right? Well, it didn't mess up my ink pad because the sponges are not wet enough to really make that much of a difference. But don't worry, we're going to test this whole thing out. We're going to figure out, do we have to wet these magic mushrooms to use them with our oxide ink pads? Let's go ahead and see what we come up with. So I have here Whimsy's Twinkle Stencil and I'm blending onto Bristol Smooth Paper. We're going to start out with the pouncing technique and I'm pouncing my picked raspberry ink down over the stencil onto the paper. You're going to see me change up here in just a few minutes. I'm going to start in with that carved pumpkin and I decide that we'll do half, do the left side with the pouncing technique and then do the right side with a blending technique. But we'll get into that in just a few minutes. So I went straight to the source to find some information on using the magic mushrooms with Distress Oxide inks and other pigment inks. And what I learned over on the Local King Rubber Stamps web, uh, YouTube channel, sorry, is that you can use these with oxides and you can use them with other pigment inks, but you have to clean them thoroughly after every use because the pigments in the inks will cause the sponge to harden over time if you're not cleaning them thoroughly. We're gonna leave that here and let it be what it is because I haven't tested them enough to know what's going to happen over time with continued use of the oxide inks with these, but we're gonna find out. I'll, I'll know by hopefully by the end of the month how that works out for us and I can give you an update then. I wanna give myself plenty of time with these and to figure out what works and what doesn't work with each type of ink before we make a final call, judgment call on them. So, and that's, that's the best way to do this is to go over every aspect that we can with them and be fair with them then make our call at the end of our little month uh, this is going to be a month-long trial with them these sponges have been popping up on youtube everywhere um, i've seen of course the other branded sponges i saw some videos on those I've seen, of course, Lisa's videos on her magic mushrooms, but now you're starting to see the knockoffs of these, right? So, of course, I took some time to watch some of these other videos to see what people had to say. Maybe they had some useful knowledge they could share with me. 
but the things that I saw really weren't that helpful and some of the things just were not true. Some are saying that you can't blend backgrounds with these sponges and that's not true. You absolutely can blend backgrounds with them and we're going to do one here shortly that we're actually going to use on our two for one card process at the end of the video. So let's go ahead and start talking about what I've learned about the sponges because I'm giving it to you like I, like I experienced it. So here you can see I'm doing that pouncing technique. I really like this technique with the oxides and stencils. And on the right side, I'm blending with it. I'm blending over my stencil in a circular motion and it's not hurting that sponge at all. So I actually like the way that the pouncing and the circular motion works with the oxides and the sponges and it gives you a very pretty result. So I'm gonna show you that result in just a few seconds. And I was using my Bristol Smooth Paper with that first stenciling that we did. This is on my everyday cardstock, my Avalanche White by Nina um, that I use. It's the same as the classic Crest Solar White. It's just that the color is Avalanche White and it's a bit brighter than the solar white is. So I wanted to be fair and show it on two different types of cardstock. I know a lot of people use Bristol Smooth cardstock for blending with Distress Oxides, they swear by it, but I also use just my everyday cardstock with my Distress Oxides and I blend perfectly fine with it. So I thought, let's be fair here and let's do a comparison of both of these. And on the left side, again, I did the pouncing. On the right side, you can see I'm blending with it in a circular motion and it's going great. Everything seems to be perfect. When you're blending in a circular motion, you need to kind of do like a claw grip on the top of that sponge. And the reason that you do that is it stabilizes the sponge for you and it makes it easier for you to lay the ink down. Now, when you're pouncing up and down, obviously you don't need to use that, what I'm calling a claw grip. But when you're doing this circular motion like I'm doing here, it helps to use that claw grip to stabilize that sponge while you're doing this blending. It makes all the difference in the world and it's going to help your sponge last longer by using that claw grip on it. I'm gonna show that to you again. You'll see it several times throughout the video. So let's have a look here. This is my Nina Classic Crest Avalanche White cardstock panel, and here is our Bristol Smooth. And you can see they both are beautiful. It's this very soft application of the ink. I absolutely love the end result. I think it turned out gorgeous. So we're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison here. On the left, we have our Whimsy Stamps Blender Brush. On the right, the Magic Mushroom Sponge. The cardstock I'm using is Nina Classic Crest Avalanche White. You're going to notice how on the left, when I'm applying the ink with the blender brush, it goes on a little bit lighter than that intense color you get with the sponge. The only problem with it is, is that you can't blend with the sponge on this type of cardstock a whole background. Now you can most definitely do the pouncing with the sponge and create that beautiful stenciled look like we did earlier on the Avalanche White. Any classic crest, you could use that. And I, I believe any cardstock you would be able to pounce a really pretty um, stenciled design onto using the sponges. But we're talking about stenciling, or not stenciling, I'm sorry, we're talking about creating a whole ink blended background, which is completely different than stenciling. We know that, right? And here you can see that it doesn't look terrible, but as I continue to try to blend it, you can just start to see where it's starting to work against me instead of for me. I'm going to say that if I had to pick one tool over the other for this type of cardstock for a full background, I would most certainly grab my blender brushes over that sponge. With that being said, we're gonna look at a side-by-side -side comparison of the finished panels, and then we're going to do this same process again, the side-by-side -side view with Bristol Smooth Paper because it's a different ball game. It's different paper, it changes everything. 
So here's that side-by-side -side view, and you can see on the left was with the blender brushes, and on the right was with the sponges. So not that great, right? Um, you could stencil over this and still use it, but still the end result is not what we want. Okay, so here we are doing a side-by-side. -side. We have Whimsy Stamps blender brushes on the left, Magic Mushrooms on the right, Bristol Smooth Paper is what we're using here. And everybody loves to use Distress Oxides with Bristol Smooth. I've never been that crazy about it either way. I mean, I can blend just as well on my regular everyday cardstock as I can the Bristol Smooth. However, with that being said, I did notice that using the Magic Mushrooms to blend Oxide inks it's much easier on Bristol Smooth Paper than it was on the Avalanche White cardstock, obviously. It is a lot easier to blend with the sponges on the Bristol Smooth as opposed to the blender brushes. If you were going to purchase these, I would recommend, if you're using oxides, to get you some Bristol Smooth Paper if you don't already have it and use that because on the right, you can see how beautiful that ink lays down and I'm doing circular motions back and forth. You see me just going to it now. In all fairness, I did, I had re-inked my picked raspberry uh, ink pad. It is picking up quite a bit of ink right now, but you know, I had, it's the same on the left. It had just been re-inked before I did this part of the video. So part of this was shot the night before, and then this part was shot the next morning. Here on the left, you see with the blender brush, and on the right, you see with the sponges, and I actually think on the right is a better blend than on the left, and I think the color is just a little bit more intense than on the left. So we have a few questions to answer at this point. One, can you use the Magic Mushroom dry with Distress Oxide inks? This whole time, my orange sponge has been my dry sponge. And I'm showing you the application of the spice, or the, sorry, the carved pumpkin onto Bristol Smooth Paper with a dry sponge. It works, and it works beautifully. Look how intense that color is. It's gorgeous. The second question we want to know is, if I use a damp sponge on my ink pad, will it mess it up? No, it did not mess up my ink pad because I my sponge wasn't wet. It was only damp. And I don't think it's wet enough to make a difference in your ink pad. Now, if you go in and your sponge is too wet, is it going to mess it up? Yes, it probably will. But if you touch your sponge to your hand and you can barely feel the dampness. It leaves no moisture behind on your hand. You should be perfectly fine. But you can see here, you don't even need to wet the sponges. So you can totally take that worry off your plate because you can use these dry and they work great. You're still gonna need to wash them and let them dry completely before you use them again if you don't wanna use a wet sponge on your Distress Oxides. And I do think that's the way that I'm gonna go with them is dry from now on on the Bristol Smooth Paper. To go ahead and wrap up this part of the video, you can use these dry with your Distress Oxides on Bristol Smooth Paper. Here are some things that I played around with during the whole process of making this video. And you can see these are beautiful results on that pouncing and circular ink blending that I did. Plus, you get great results on that Bristol Smooth with a dry sponge and the oxides. Remember, you need to clean these after using them with any oxide or pigment ink and let them dry completely. Okay, so here are some new products that just dropped in the Whimsy Stamps online shop today. So I don't normally say this, but I'm going to say this now. Run, don't walk, because these are so cute together. So we just had a look at the Monster Cutie Stamp Set and it does have coordinating dies. I don't have the dies, but you can pick them up. They, they are available. There's another set available that's cute little monsters as well, but I love the monster cuties. They are amazing. And the sentiments with them, so much fun. We're going to get into that a little bit later. Earlier in the video, I said this was the wow word and shadow. It's actually the wowzers word and shadow die set, but you can do wow 
with a shadow or you can do wowzers with a shadow. And I love that about Whimsy. They're giving you two options in this set. We're going to use both of them on our two for one card. And here we go. I was so excited for this die set because there's so much possibility with this one die set. You have a frame that is so much fun. That's called the weirdo frame die set. And then you have two more pieces that come with it. And we're going to be using the piece I have here in my hand. And I end up not using the shadow for it, but I want to revisit this in a video dedicated just to this die set later on. Um, but for right now, we're just going to do our two for one with this die I have in my hand. So we're going to go ahead and do some die cutting with this one die from the Weirdo Frame die set. And I'm going to just create my whole cover plate with this one die. And I'm going to start up in the bottom left corner of my panel. And we're going to run it through the die cutting machine. The one thing I do want to say is make sure that you're leaving an edge around your panel. So that when you get ready to lay down mounting foam, you have enough room for that mounting foam to lay and you won't see it through your circles. So I recommend about an eighth to a quarter of an inch left around the edge of that panel while you're doing this. Go ahead and position it a second time because like I said, we're filling this whole panel up with these circles. And you know what? If you have some space like I have here in that top left corner as you're looking at this, don't worry about it. In the end, this is a card with monsters on it and it's all about weirdos and <laughs> um, it's just a fun card. So let it be a little bit quirky. It adds to the charm of the card, I guess you could say. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to run this through to cut out more circles. Cut as many as you possibly can without running it off the edge of the cardstock. So remember, you need that one eighth of an inch to a quarter inch uh, frame around the edge of your card so you can put mounting foam on the back of it. Now, here you see me, I'm pointing to that plate. I'm talking about the spell binders that's on the plate. Let that be a constant reminder to you to rotate your plate, flip your plate upside down. Each time you run it through your machine, you should be rotating your plates because it helps to cut back on the wear and tear of your plates. It also helps with warping. I know a lot of people talk about warping. I do use the magic mat with my machine and it does help with warping, but also using that rotating of the plates each time you run it through, that helps too. So there I did a little bit of partial die cutting. Um, partial die cutting is so easy. You just need to remember wherever you want to cut is where you want to apply pressure and then run it through and you have your partial die cutting done. There are videos here on the channel about partial die cutting that you can check out also over on my channel, Confetti and Cards with Lisa Mincing, if you want to check them out over there as well. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the shadows out of black cardstock with my wow and wowzers word. And we're going to do the letters for each word out of a heavyweight white cardstock. And I'm going to do several layers of that so that I can stack them on top of each other to create some dimension. So we're going to go ahead and do some stamping with this adorable Monsters Cutie stamp set. So I'm using just two of the monsters. I've stamped them with Memento Tuxedo Black ink, and we're going to do some quick Copic coloring. Now, while I start the coloring process, I do want to talk a little bit about the sentiments in this set. They're so much fun. So one of them reads, the world needs your brand of weird. And the other one reads, I like your brand of crazy. It matches mine. Plus you have some buildable sentiments in this one with monster wishes, good luck, cute hug, and cute little. So lots of things that you can do with this set. Plus, like I mentioned earlier, there are coordinating dies that go with this, the outline dies. They're available for purchase in the store right now. I'm going to start the Copic coloring process now and I'm doing the polka dots or the spots on his back in black. And then we're going to do some simple coloring with N2 and N0 just to lay down a little bit of shadow in different areas on him. And then his hair is going to be pink and his horns are going to be orange and that's it. We're going to do the little guy on the top with a 
N0 to add a little bit of shadows around the edges of him. His horns are going to be black. His tongue is going to be colored in with RV06. I'm going to stamp over my images like I always do with my Versafine Onyx Black ink. I just love the way it finishes the images off. It really makes them pop off the front of your card when you do this. Once it's dry, we'll take it to the scan and cut and let those cut out. Now, if you have the dies, go ahead and by all means use those. I'm using my ATG to run some tape around the edge of my cover plate that we cut. Then I'm going to add a piece of this calls for confetti A2 acetate to the back side of this. And then we're going to go ahead and do around the edge with the 1 8 of an inch wide foam. We're going to do two layers so that we can fill our shaker card and get it put together. Here, when you're laying your foam down around the edge, make sure that the edges of the foam are always nice and snug to each other. That way when you feel the shaker and the recipient gets it and shakes it up, nothing flies out. Now you can do one layer of foam or two layers. It just depends on how freely you want your shaker bits to move around in the card. I'm just filling the front of my card base with my shaker bits and yeah, I dumped confetti out. It's nothing new in this house, trust me. I'm using a mixture of products from this Calls for Confetti. I'm using those Gloss Black Sparkle Gems, Teeny Tiny Safety Yellow, Teeny Tiny Tangerine, and our Iridescent Dark Pink Sequins. I'm going to go ahead and get this covered up before I make another mess. And then I'll clean all of that up and we'll jump into creating the second card from our two for one card. So I actually had a template that I had cut out for another card and I, hang, I just decided I'm gonna hang on to this because I'm either gonna make a shaker out of it, I'm gonna use it for something. So I held on to it and I just laid it over a card base and used it to lay down a bunch of mounting foam pieces and I'm just gonna come in and start laying down my die cut pieces wherever I want them. I'm not going to worry about keeping them in any particular order because, you know, we had done that ombre ink blending on our card panel. I'm going to keep most of these in that ombre color, but there's a couple that I'm just going to toss like a yellow in the top right corner just to throw things out of whack a little bit. I think it adds to the quirkiness of this card um, by doing that. So here I'm just going to go ahead and start placing down all the pieces. Now, on your card, you can place them however you want. So I did go ahead and layer all the letters up with Barely Art glue, and then I had let those dry and adhered them to that shadow. And I'm just coming in now after adding the Wowzer and the Little Monster, I'm adding some more gloss black sparkle gems just to bring all of this together. I think that black just kind of pulls the black from the sentiment, the black from his ears, and what's in the shaker card. It just pulls it all together. I'm going to go ahead and place the sentiment and the monster on my second card using Barely Art Glue. And then we'll also add some little black sparkle gems to this card as well. I do want to let you know on the inside of the card is where I stamped those fun sentiments from that stamp set. The world needs your brand of weird. And I like your brand of crazy. It matches mine. I use those on the inside of the card. I just thought it was so much fun making these cards. Um, I just had a blast with this one. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think about the Magic Mushrooms and the Distress Oxide inks down in the comments below. And what do you think about the new products from Whimsy? I'm telling you, I absolutely love this weirdo frame die set. I think it's going to be one that I use a lot in my card making. So as always, I have my products linked down below with affiliate links. I appreciate you so much when you shop through those. It gives me a small commission. And as always, please know how much I appreciate you for taking time out of your schedule to sit and watch a video that I created. And I know that the owner of Whimsy appreciates you watching as well. Don't forget, you can find us over on Instagram, Pinterest, and Facebook. We love to have you follow us there as well. 
So until next time, y'all, please take care.